I'm going to talk to you today about vitamin D supplementation in camelids. Camelids are very susceptible to vitamin D deficiency. They came from South America, which as you're probably aware is at the equator. And also most of the animals are kept um, at high altitude. That means that they're exposed to much higher levels of ultraviolet radiation than they are when you take them away from those areas to, you know, away from the equator and down to sea level, like here in the UK, most parts of the US, Australia and New Zealand. Although we always think of some of these places as super sunny places, um, they're still going to get vitamin D deficiency. So <clears throat> we need to supplement our camelid species in those areas when we take them away from the areas that they're adapted to dealing with. And what we do traditionally is we supplement them with injectable vitamin D products. There are oral vitamin D products that are available too, and I'll come on to those in a minute. Um, <clears throat> but the injectable vitamin D products, um, we would usually start thinking about giving those to alpacas and llamas in October time. Sometimes I would start a little bit earlier in September if we've had a particularly dull August, um, because it's all about how much vitamin D they're able to make in the skin as a result of the ultraviolet acting on the vitamin D precursors in the skin to create the vitamin D. <clears throat> now, we start in October time generally, and vitamin D, injectable vitamin D products last um, about two months in cameras. It does last a little bit longer in adults, um, but lasts about two months. Now we dose them every two months. So that would be in the UK, Northern Hemisphere anywhere. We'd start in October, then we go December, February and April. And I do recommend doing that April dose just because it takes a while for the ultraviolet radiation to build up in the springtime. And sometimes it can still be a little bit dull and spring grass is notoriously low in vitamin D content. So we want to make sure that they're covered through that period. And and also if we've got pregnant females supplementing with vitamin D in springtime before they give birth means that their careers are going to be born with a good level of vitamin D also at the time of birth. So every eight, eight weeks, two months during the winter time with injectable vitamin D, um, you can stretch that out further with adults because it does tend to last a little bit longer. Um, you can go every two to uh, every two to three months with adults. Um, so adults can also benefit from vitamin D and careers we're usually trying to prevent rickets, which is the most obvious manifestation of vitamin D deficiency in young growing animals. They, they get very, um, <clears throat> they get sort of um, hunched back appearance and they're sort of walking with a stilted gait which is very painful because their growth plates are actually quite swollen um, and that can be a very very painful situation so it's most obvious with rickets but vitamin D is also involved in a whole bunch of things like the immune system and mammary, mammary development and also lactational performance so we do still want to improve those things in adult animals even when they're not pregnant. Um, but, you know, they can make do with a little bit less, you know, just one or two doses over the winter um, if you want to economize there. Um, so the dose for the uh, vitamin D, for the injectable vitamin D or oral supplementation, it doesn't matter which, is 1,000 to 2,000 units per kilogram of, um, of body weight of the animal. So if an animal weighs um, 70 kilograms, uh, we want to be able to give them 70,000 to 140,000 units of vitamin D. Now, if you have a product that contains, you always have to look at the label, if you've got a product that contains 100,000 units per mil of vitamin D, then you're going to need to give 0.7 of a mil to 1.4 of a mil. Okay, so it's just all based on body weight. You can do it in sort of 10 kilogram um, blocks, if that makes sense. But it's always worth knowing roughly what your animals weigh so that you can dose them appropriately. Um, darker animals can benefit from the slightly higher dose because they generally will sit at a much lower level of vitamin D anyway because they've got pigment that interferes with the production of vitamin D in their skin. So once you give them that injection, um, it does overcome it a bit more, but you can make it last a little bit longer if you use the slightly higher dose. But somewhere in that 1,000 to 2,000 units per, per kilogram um, of vitamin D, um, uh, sorry, per bo of body weight um, for the vitamin D dosing. Um, now that is going to be given subcutaneously um, most often times. Okay. Now you can give oral products as, as vitamin D supplementation as well. The oral products do need to be given more frequently though. So it's a little bit more um, labor intensive. You're probably looking about every four to six weeks instead of um, every, every two months. So it doesn't matter which you give 
as long as you dose appropriately. So you'll need to look at the label and find out how much vitamin D is in the product. And again, dose at 1000 to 2000 units per kilogram. Because they often come in big syringes, if you're dosing smaller animals, you might want to dispense that into a smaller dosing syringe just so that you can make sure that you dose them accurately. They often come with instructions like five mils per animal. That's not going to be appropriate for your smaller um, creas. So if you prefer going orally, that's absolutely fine. Um, but um, some people prefer injectable, some people prefer oral dosing it really is down to personal preference on that one and how often you want to um, administer the vitamin d if you've enjoyed this video i'd really love it if you like it down below and also subscribe to my channel for more great free value